well my students we have completed the discussion of the theory of nmr and the nmr that is concerned with the magnetic nuclei the simple way to identify a nucleus is a nmr active or not the mass number you take the mass number and if the mass number is exactly divisible by 4 if the mass number of that nucleus is exactly divisible by 4 it will be nmr inactive and if it is not possible to divide the mass number exactly by 4 it would be nmr active so h1 c13 there these are the mass numbers 1 13 etc and their mass numbers are not exactly divisible by 4 so they are nmr active I I told you among the NMR active nuclei, the most prominent member is hydrogen one. So we have completed the theory of the proton NMR, PMR, or hydrogen NMR. Now we also covered how to take the NMR spectrum. You are taking the sample and keep that sample in an external magnetic field, and you are giving the radio frequency radiation. and uh, the proton and absorption takes place the proton will absorb the radiation and goes to the higher energy beta level from the alpha level and that resonant energy that is that can be calculated or from the beta level the proton can be relaxed to the lower level alpha during that relaxation process excess energy will be liberated and that excess energy that will be that is liberating that can be determined by using nmr spectrometer and that nmr spectrometer gives a plot between what between the intensity in the y axis and and magnetic field in the x axis where we are giving the same frequency for all the protons we are changing only what we are changing only the magnetic field so this is the conventional nmr uh, spectro nmr spectrum where we are getting signals absorption as uh, signals we know suppose our compound is having number of protons number of protons if all the protons present in a compound absorb under the same magnetic field using the same frequency we are getting only one signal we are getting only one second signal in that case nmr is useless it can't transfer information regarding the structure of the compound but the beauty is that the beauty of the nmr is that the compounds contain different sets of protons the different sets of proton means the protons present in the organic compound are in different chemical environment since they are in different chemical environment they may feel one and the same magnetic field that we are giving and hence the resonant signals will be getting in not in one position but in different position that is when you consider when you consider a bare proton when you consider a naked proton suppose we are giving a field strength of 1 tesla the proton is really getting 1 tesla the proton is really getting 1 tesla and hence we can give a radio frequency of radiation say 60 megahertz 60 megahertz the proton can absorb the radiation because whatever be the magnetic field that we have given to the proton the proton is getting the same magnetic field because there is no other force to counteract the magnetic field given by us to the proton am i right but in normal case it is very difficult to get a naked proton in compounds there present the nucleus and also the surrounding electrons the surrounding electrons are involved in what the surrounding electrons are involved in bonding therefore definitely they are present surrounding electrons and we know this electron is also a quantum particle being a quantum particle it also has got a spin therefore the electron spin also produces a magnetic field 
and the magnetic field produced by the electron may assist or resist the applied magnetic field. So this is the applied magnetic field and then say this is the direction of the magnetic field produced by the electron. It is smaller than that of the magnetic field given by us. Though it is smaller, it has got a prominent effect. Now, just for example, here we are giving, say, uh, one Tesla. Here we are giving one Tesla. When it was naked, the proton is getting the one Tesla magnetic field. And we, are, we can give 60 megahertz radiation for the excitation. Right? Suppose there is an electron cloud around the proton and the electron cloud produces a magnetic field and the magnetic field is assisting the applied magnetic field. When it is assisting the applied magnetic field, the field felt by the proton is not, not at all 1 Tesla. Suppose it is say 0.2 Tesla. 0.2 Tesla is the field produced by the electron. So what is the net field produced by, net field felt by the proton? It is not 1, it is 1.2. Am I right? The net field is 1.2 Tesla. And in order to absorb the 60 megahertz radiation, the proton requires only 1 Tesla. Now it has 1.2 Tesla. So what, will, what we have to do? We have to reduce the strength of the field. We need to give only 0.8 Tesla and 0.2 Tesla that we are giving plus the field given by the electron, the field supplied by the electron, 0.2, this becomes equal to what? This becomes equal to 1 Tesla. Under that condition, the proton can absorb the radiation. Therefore, the field given by us to resonate this proton, that is less than the normal field. In that case, the proton is said to be de-shielded. The proton is said to be de-shielded. As it is de-shielded, it gives signal. It gives a signal in a lower magnetic field. In a lower magnetic field. Earlierly, it was at, at one Tesla unit. Now, it gives signal at 0 0.8 Tesla. So, this effect is known as the, the de-shielding effect. So, what is de-shielding? If the ring current of the electron if the ring current of the electron present around the pro proton supports supports the applied magnetic field, then the proton is said to be de-shielded. Since it is de-shielded, we have to give only a lesser applied magnetic field for the proton to undergo resonance. So the electron produces a, a field and that field is supporting the applied magnetic field. In that case, the proton is said to be de-shielded. A de-shielded proton requires a lesser applied magnetic field. Okay, now you consider another case. The second case is what? Again, we are considering a naked proton. And here we are giving a 1 Tesla as the applied magnetic field. And since there present no electron, we, the proton, will get the 1 tesla itself. Now we are giving the radiation of 60 megahertz. For example, 60 megahertz. The proton will absorb the radiation and produces a signal as a result of the spin flipping. I, we told you or we studied about that. Now, here you consider an electron cloud. Here again you consider an electron cloud. So this is the electron cloud present around the proton. When you consider the electron cloud present around this proton, just listen, this electron cloud is actually against the applied magnetic field. So the circulation of the electron cloud is in that way such that the, upper, the resultant magnetic field or the magnetic field produced by the electron is counteracting the applied magnetic field. So this is the direction of the applied magnetic field and this is the direction of the field produced by the electron due to the circulation, due to its circulation. So in this case, in this case, what is actually happening? We are giving one Tesla to the proton. We are thinking that the proton is getting the one Tesla. Do you think that the proton is getting the one Tesla? 
no it is not getting why because there is a magnetic field which will resist the applied magnetic field suppose the the field produced by the proton is say 1.2 sorry 0.2 tesla so the, we are giving one tesla and the electron cloud produces 0.2 tesla and that 0.2 tesla is opposing the applied magnetic field if it is opposing the applied magnetic field can you say the field really felt by the proton now actually we are getting one tesla we are supposing that the proton is getting one tesla do you think that the proton is getting one tesla no it is not getting why because there is a there is an opposing field produced by the ring current of the electron and that ring current of electron opposes the applied magnetic field or in other words we can say the magnetic field produced by the electron cloud is opposing the applied magnetic field though we are giving one tesla though we are giving one tesla the proton is now getting only 0.8 tesla the po the proton is getting only 0.8 tesla right the po the proton is getting only 0.8 tesla at now and at 0.8 tesla that proton will will not absorb this radiation will not absorb the 60 megahertz radiation we are giving one and the same radiation with the same frequency we are giving to that proton we are changing only the magnetic field now we are giving one tesla with a view to that with a view with a with a view that the proton will resonate will absorb but due to the ring current of the electron the ring current of the electron produces a magnetic field which is resisting the applied magnetic field as a result of that now the proton is getting only one 0.8 tesla the net field felt by the proton is only 0.8 tesla now resonance is not not happen the resonance will not happen in order to res resonate this proton what we have to do we have to increase the field strength so from the one tesla we have to improve we have to increase the field strength by 1.2 tesla when 1.2 tesla is gi giving to this proton 0.2 tesla will be opposed even if it is opposed what is the net field generated what is the net field felt by the proton that is one tesla under one tesla we need to give only 60 megahertz so resonance will happen therefore this proton gives a signal not at one not at 0.8 but at 1.2 tesla site so in earlier case we found that the proton that is giving a signal under low magnetic field in that case the ring current of the electron assist the applied magnetic field but in this case the ring current of the electron resist the applied magnet uh, the ring current of the electron resist the applied magnetic field so in the earlier case the effect is said to be de shielding now the effect is said to be shielding so there are two types of effects produced by the ring current present around the proton they are called as shielding and de shielding if the ring current of the electron is resisting the applied magnetic field it is called as shielding and a shielded proton needs a higher applied magnetic field to come into resonance whereas a de shielded proton feels higher field or a greater field and hence it requires only a lower applied magnetic field so remember that there are present different types of protons some protons may be moderately shielded some protons may be de shielded to a greater extent therefore different sets of protons give signal under a different magnetic field the shifting of the signal position the shifting of the signal position due to shielding or de shielding of proton by electrons is called as shielding effect so what is shielding effect the shifting of the signal position due to a set of proton due to shielding or de shielding of the protons by the electrons is called as chemical shift right and that chemical shift is denoted by the symbol the chemical shift is denoted by the symbol delta this is delta now we know it is rather difficult to measure the field to be given for the resonance of a particular set of proton so what field should be given identify the proton and giving the field it is rather difficult and uh, in order to avoid that difficulty when we take the spectrum of a compound we will take a reference material and uh, 
that reference material is containing largest number of largest number of shielded protons largest number of shielded protons and we are measuring the chemical shift not in absolute way but in the relative way with a reference to a standard material why because it is rather difficult to measure the real field to be given for the resonance of a particular set of proton in a compound if we know definitely we know the structure but it is uh, it is we are we are unaware of the structure of the compounds so we don't know how what field should be given to a set of protons to resonate since we are unaware of the structure of the compounds what we will do we will measure not the real field but the relative field what field should be given and hence we are measuring the shifting we are measuring the chemical shift not our not uh, really but not our uh, not really but in a relative manner not actually but relative manner and uh, in order to relate the chemical shift we are taking a standard reference and that standard reference is known as tms once again the standard reference is known as tms tetra methyl silane where silane si that is a central that is connected to three other methyl group si ch3 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 this is known as tetra methyl silane and why we are particularly selecting this tetra methyl silane there are number of reasons one is tetra methyl silane that is neutral and it is soluble with our organic compounds the under consideration the com the suppose we are taking a compound a whose spectrum is to be taken it then a is mixing with the, this tetra methyl silane being a neutral compound it will not impart any other property to that compound under consideration or the probe compound so there is nothing to worry about that so it is highly volatile and uh, the original compound can be recovered very easily and uh, this tetra methyl silane contains 12 number of equivalent protons 12 number of equivalent protons all these three all these four methyl groups are under the same chemical environment and they are shielded to the maximum extent so there are 12 chemically and stereochemically equivalent protons all of them are shielded equally and uh, this is the compound which is having the highest value that is having the highest magnetic field and hence here we can say this is having the lowest value of chemical shift arbitrarily we are giving the chemical shift value of this compound delta equal to zero we know this compound is this compound contains 12 number of uh, shielded protons most shielded protons and hence the signal due to tetra methyl silane will be getting if this is the spectrum the sp if this is the spectrum the tetra methyl silane signal will be getting in the up field region in the up field region therefore this is the up field region this is the down field region around so this is the up field region this is the down field region therefore in the higher a magnetic field we are getting the signal and signal due to our compound will be getting below or just back to the tm signal therefore the signal of our compound will be getting just left to the signal due to tms so we can measure the difference between the signal position of tms and the signal position of our compound and this difference is called as chemical shift so chemical shift delta that is the difference in the signal position of tms and the signal position of our compound and this delta that is usually varies from 0 to 10 and zero is given arbitrarily for tms zero is given arbitrarily for tms and the lowest value that is taken as 10 therefore normally it varies from zero to 10 zero is meant for the tms standard reference and our compounds give signal left to the signal of tms 
and the difference in the position between the signal of TMS and the, the proton set signal of our compound that is known as the chemical shift and again that chemical shift can be calculated very easily using this expression that is chemical shift delta that is expressed in ppm that is equal to frequency new reference new or sample frequency of, so frequency of the sample new sample new reference frequency of the reference divided by frequency of the reference in megahertz in megahertz this is in hertz and uh, in order to make a convenient value you have to multiply it with, it with the 10 raised to 6 so in that way we can calculate the chemical shift so chemical shift is expressed in the unit of ppm remember that shielded protons give signal nearer to the tms de-shielded protons give signal away from the tms shielded protons are having lower value of chemical shift de-shielded protons are having higher value of the chemical shift so from the signal position we can understand the shielding and de-shielding of the proton set how far each proton set is shielded or de-shielded and in terms of the magnetic field also we can calculate the uh, chemical shift then new reference uh, beta reference beta sample divided by beta uh, reference in that way we can calculate you need to worry, worry about that you stick on this equation that is delta in ppm equal to new sample minus new reference divided by new reference in megahertz into 10 to the power of 6 ppm where new is the frequency of the radiation uh, required for the spin flipping for the sample new that is the frequency of the radiation required for the reference material tms for the spin flipping now this is also equal to delta nu this difference that is equal to delta nu we can calculate the chemical shift in that way okay in the next uh, video i shall say more about the factors affecting the chemical shift and its uh, spin spin coupling and also how to interpret the spectrum right